Hey, good evening, and welcome to another episode of Streamer Nova. This is beta episode number two. That's right. We're just piling on the beta episodes while we're trying to get things uh, situated and uh, you know fleshed out a little bit more. Uh, so welcome to tonight's episode. We're going to be talking a little bit about the Twitch missteps and what has been going on lately with Twitch. And it's 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 kind of like a uh, hairy ride, so to speak. <laughs> Not really hairy. I mean, it's kind of a weird ride that it started out, uh, was it, a little bit about middle of last year, where all of a sudden they were hit with a whole bunch of DMCA notices on a lot of streamers within the Twitch platform. Now, of course, Twitch really didn't have a a way to figure things out or how to go about things because the mindset at the time for almost a decade of twitch's existence was hey if you play some copyrighted music all we're gonna do is mute the vod and uh go about your day but unfortunately that's not going to happen that's not going to work out going forward in the future now youtube had dealt with the same problem eight uh eight or nine years ago and they spent buckets of money and some time and got things situated where if you do play content or uh copyrighted music i should say your your video is muted in that one little particular section and any kind of monetization, if you had it available to you for that one video, goes to the copyright holder. Which, hey, it's not perfect. It's not perfect at all. It's just a lot better than what Twitch's current plan is. As if you call it a plan. Really, Twitch, since that moment, or June, or yeah, June or July of last year, they have still not really given a, a a way for people to uh counter claim or counter appeal or to actually see what's going on here but hey they hear you and they are working on things and there is a roadmap of things that are going to be done by the end of this year yes you heard me right the end of 2021 around December time frame. Right now, currently, if you go to, if you're a streamer on Twitch and you go to your video producer tab, you'll see a tab or a section on the right-hand side that says uh, if you have any uh, copyright claims on your videos or on your stream. Now, that is... Okay, I can see I can see how they're doing. They're basically trying to get something worked together real quick and call it a day until they can take the time and try to flesh it out. Well, they've had over eight, almost a decade of working on this, but decided to sit on their hands and not do anything about the DMCA. Even though they saw YouTube dealing with it or having to deal with it and all the troubles and almost YouTube going like going bye bye because of Viacom and stuff like that. YouTube figured their stuff out. Unfortunately, Twitch decided, to, eh, nah, bro, that's not gonna happen here. <laughs> I don't know where the Aussie accent, but came from. But hey, we're gonna roll with it. And now, if you get if you have someone that uh, claims copyright on maybe one of your streams. You get a copyright strike. Yes. You get, if you get three strikes, your channel is done. It's, it's all oh, game over, man. Game over. But on YouTube, if you do get a copyright strike, you have at least 90 days that, or yeah, that section of time that you have to go through. If you don't get anything else, that will eventually fall off. And then you're back into good standings with, uh, to one or zero copyright claims. And that situ or that system is a lot better than what Twitch is basically taking a shotgun to, to your face instead of a 22 or just like 
It's picking at you, picking at you with a with a knife. Um. So Twitch is they still don't have a way to you can you can count you can counter a claim, but the way they have you do it is convoluted. It's just it's not the best system that they have out there. And even then, where between uh, what was it last month and June of last year. The only way you can get rid of or keep this from happening is to delete everything that you had. Yes. That was Twitch's answer is um, delete your entire channel's history in one foul swoop. Thousands of videos are gone just because they could not take the time and spend the money in developing a rudimentary system in dealing with this particular problem until 2019 2020 but hey it's twitch they're they're sitting around not doing much and another thing that came up was that we have all seen the you know the hot tub meta we've all seen those uh videos or those streams on youtube i mean not youtube but twitch well it's it's something where that maybe if you saw just chatting and you're looking at just chatting you probably seen at most 10 at maybe 15 streams out of how many thousands of streamer or channels that are streaming to just chatting obviously this was a big deal to you know the I, I would like to call the the loud minority of detractors out there because Oh my God, it's a woman in a bikini sitting around floating in a hot tub. You know what? Get over yourself. Who cares? And if you're saying, oh, they're going to be stealing my views. Dude, those people who are watching those particular streams were not going to go to your stream after that person's stream was done. Then no, they're just going to go to another another uh, hot tub stream and watch that and then simp for all, the, for all their money is worth. I mean, really. You don't worry about those viewers. Yes, they're creepy and sometimes downright disgusting. It's like, why, what? But to complain so loudly that Twitch had decided, oh, we're going to, we're going to finally take care of this problem and decided to start up a new channel or a, a new category. Now, this is what they sent out on Friday. Yes, uh, yeah, May 21st. So on Friday, they sent out a blog post. And they posted up on Twitter and all the other social media. It says, over the past few weeks, we've seen and had many conversations about hot tub streams, and we want to address it candidly. The content brings up questions that are complex, but few easy, clear answers. We're approaching it thoughtfully and respectively, which is why we've taken our time to address it publicly after a lot of internal deliberation. Given the nuances, this is going to be a long post, but we wanted to explain in detail our thinking and approach as well as the next steps, both in the short and long term. Now, looking at this, it it seems okay, Twitch is trying to do something that not that many people cared about because the people who do care about this are like I like again like I said are the the loud minority and numbers of people that were crying from the rooftops proclaiming that Twitch is going is is this is, Twitch is done if they continue this way. It doesn't affect over 90% of the streams out there, seriously. But the problem was it was not the viewers. It was not the people watching these streams. It was the advertisers. And the advertisers decide what is appropriate within Twitch or on Twitch. We saw earlier this week, this past week, that one streamer in particular, Amaranth, her advertising, but not advertising budget, but her advertising uh, income was cut off and Twitch did not reach out to her. 
No. Twitch decided to cut off that faucet of money coming in. And with her uh, explanation through as, uh, when she was talking to Asmongold, another uh, Twitch streamer, that it had been a week or two, or no, it has been a couple weeks when she was running ads on her channel, but were not, was not getting paid for. The problem is, is that Twitch did not reach out to her, did not say, hey, Amrith, um, we're getting a lot of pushback from our advertisers and saying that you're an advertising or brand risk. And unfortunately, we're having to cut off the income that you get from advertisement here on Twitch. Sorry, it's it's out of our hands. Unfortunately, they did not do that. It was something where even when she contacted her partner manager, because when you're a partner at that level, you get somebody that is um, like in your back pocket. They got your back. Even they, an employee of Twitch, did not know exactly what was going on. And they had to send it up the, you know, the chain, you know, blue sky, that problem. And they had to come back says, yeah, oh yeah, that's right. Um, unfortunately, it was uh, Twitch decided to take action. Again, yet another blatant, I'm not going to say uh, disregard for the, their creator's uh, income or well-being to just have this portion of your income just snatched out from you. No, it's something that Twitch has been very consistent about being inconsistent with enforcing their TOS, their rules, enforcing uh, anything else on their their platform, letting their content creators and large partners know what is happening or anything that's affecting their particular streams. Twitch can care less about you as a content creator. As long as, as, as you're making money for them and you're bringing in money and you're keeping the advertisers happy, that's all they really care about. They could care less. When you look at the their tweets, say, oh, look at this partner streamer. Aren't they having a good time? Look at them. Oh, they're so happy and saying how happy they are here on Twitch. They can care less. That's just PR fluff. The problem is, is Twitch cons consistently says we must do better. Uh, let me find it in this particular um, uh, blog post. It was just, it was a mistake. Okay, uh, do, do, do. our creators rely on us, and we should have alerted effective streamers to this change before it happened. It was a mistake not to do so. We're working with individual creators to address their specific situations and restore ads where appropriate. Really, Twitch? Really? You've been called out, and now you're going backtrack and say, oh, my bad. No, come on. You have your uh, a financial and uh, corporate duty to let these people know exactly what's going on because it affects them and a large part of what they do and how they conduct their business while using your platform. It's, it's consistently that Twitch constantly says that we hear you, we see you, tell us your feedback and stuff like that. There has been plenty of times where people have constantly told them that to make these changes or stop doing particular things, and Twitch just it turns a blind eye to it. They they don't care. Now another thing is that yes I know this is just within these past couple this past week, but to deal with this the hot tubs the hot tub meta as it as it were as it became known is that their solution in the short term is to create a category a new category called. Pools, hot tubs, and beaches. Yes, a problem to take care of, a solution to take care of this problem is to create another category where we can take all those people who are streaming in the hot tubs or by a pool or at a beach and put them all in this one particular category because 
they obviously can't deal with trying to take care of just chatting because I myself has sent countless reports that where people are in the wrong category because you know what? I do care about the platform, even though I harp on it a lot. I, 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 I seem like I complain a lot. I do care about the platform up to a certain point, which that point is starting to get lower and lower where you send in a report and nothing happens for hours on end. And it's just like it, you, you feel like that nothing is going to change. Um, that nothing is going to change. They, especially when it seems like no one at Twitch works on the weekends, in particular the mod team, that when you send in a report on a Friday, uh, Friday night and nothing gets done, it, I, I believe they did say to try to be more transparent from Twitch is that you will receive an email from, from Twitch that an action was taken from a report, whether yes or no has been taken or not. Unfortunately, I have never received any emails from Twitch proclaiming that action was taken or not taken on the particular reports. I have not seen anything like that. So then again, there is an empty promise that Twitch has sent out and they can care less. I mean, We've seen it all the times with their their ways of TOS enforcement is not the best it is haphazardly biased because if you're a larger platform or I mean you're a larger partner the rules really don't apply to you if you're a smaller one so what Twitch has done is went ahead and created a new category like I said pools hot tubs and beaches and that's their their solution to the short term problem. So because they view these particular streams as potentially, or not Twitch, but brands and advertisers view these particular streams and creators as a risk, even though there are, there are plenty of games out there that are just as bad or not worse, but Hey, it's okay. We'll, we'll throw an ad. We'll throw our Nike ad in there or something. But hey, that's the advertiser's call. And Twitch is beholden to the advertisers because Amazon wants Twitch to do better. As Twitch has not really done great uh, metrics in regards to ads or advertisers, they've actually missed their target uh, this past year. So as we can see, the only innovation that Twitch has made is to to or towards the ads viewing experience, which then again, pre-roll ads. We, yeah, we love them. Let's have more of them <laughs> or any kind of innovation that they say, Hey, this is how ads can be on your stream and look at it. It's a, it's a lower third, but it's been months since they, they showed us what that particular concept was. And I'm not, uh, at all confident that it's going to show up. We're going to still see more pre-rolls and uh, streamers being forced to put in mid-rolls because they, if they don't want pre-rolls, you got to run a commercial strike or commercial segment. Now, and moving on to yet another thing that came out this Friday was for a long time, the uh, trans community has been for what, two years now, looking for a, a, a tag that they can put on their streams so they can find other people within their community. And Twitch, in their infinite wisdom, has decided that's too hard. We can't do that. We don't have the technology to do this. Yet, we can instantly put in a category within a week or two of for hot tubbers. No problem. Want to float around on a, on a hot dog or, or pickle Rick for hours on end in, a, in tepid water? By all means, we have the means to take care of you. But anyone in the LGBTQ or any kind of uh, minority class or uh, minority um, segment of the population 
it, we don't have time for you. Sorry. Unfortunately, it has been that way for two plus years. I've been looking at this and that the trans, the uh, trans community has been wanting just to the tag say, Hey, there's there, there, a, a, a trans streamer, go ahead, put it in there. But no, they were constantly belittled and says, even if we do, what would happen is there would be too much abuse and it, it, it'll be, it'll be, uh, the apocalypse and no, 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 it, we don't want that. We want to protect you guys. <laughs> well, obviously that changed within next or these past couple weeks, the past couple months since, uh, TwitchCon and the, uh, past just chatting, uh, or no, let's chat show that only aired one episode before and being canceled, so to speak. Now they Twitch is be is going to be putting in 350 plus new tags. Wow. They must have had hired a lot of people to take care of this, right? No, all this is, is probably putting in a, a uh, new columns and a simple database to pull up these tags. It's not that hard to, to figure out. Um, so we see here is next week streamers will be able to select from over 350 new tags related to gender, sexual orientation, race, nationality, ability, mental health, and more. The list of tags include trans transgender, black, disabled, veteran, and VTuber, among many others. We will also remove references to ally from the LGBTQIA plus tag and are instead creating a standalone ally tag. These additions won't change how tagging works and are completely optional. They simply give creators more choices. So we're going back to how it was with, uh, if you're, what was it? 2018, I want to say was the end of communities where a particular person can set up a community, which is very similar to how tags work, but in a different way. This is what it seems like because there's just adding and adding more tags. It's, which is a good thing. This is what a lot of these, these communities have been asking for, for years and constantly been told no. And so Twitch is now coming, coming together. I don't know what's changed over there. It's just weird how all of a sudden this is, it seems like a priority now. It's like, oh, let's go ahead and put it through. And the funny thing is the tweet that they posted, the, the link to this blog post, they stated that, oh, we were saving this up till next week, but we heard you and there's a lot of commotion. So we're going to ahead and release this PR uh, blog post now. You're welcome. No, come on. <laughs> it's ridiculous how Twitch thinks that everyone that streams or uses their platform is dumb. Seriously. Twitch thinks you're stupid and that you're, you're going to forgive them or forget exactly what was going on. Now, a lot of this is I've been trying to find it. The, uh, particular words that or a uh, sentence that they use is one that, I mean, that I've seen it time and time again. Oh yes. Uh, this has been one of the most popular requests we've heard. And the simple truth is that we should have done this sooner. Yes, you should have done this sooner within six months of being told and having a large outpouring of people wanting this, that you should have, should have looked into it and done this. But no, you drug your heels through the sand and he said, oh, we know better. We know what, what you actually really want is a better ad experience, more ads. No, <laughs> it's just, it's just plain stupid how Twitch has been going through these um this these years and it's almost a decade of the, of its existence and not really understanding how or how the world of content creation works or how their people or their creators 
are wanting to things to be done. It's unfortunate that it's going through that, but I think what Twitch is seeing is that the simple fact that before COVID, I should have pulled this up before, but when you look, when you see these, the Streamlabs quarterly reports that are posted on Twitter every once, uh, every quarter, before COVID, in actuality, Twitch was on a downward slope of concurrent viewers until COVID hit on that March before that huge spike, Twitch was on its way down on viewership and a lot of other things until COVID they didn't, they weren't doing so well, but now that they see themselves as this huge platform that a lot of people are going to and streaming on that they feel that they really don't need to do anything until YouTube has started to make some moves and saying, okay, well, we're, we're beta testing the clip feature, which in my opinion is a hundred million times more, more better. That's where I was going better than Twitch's clip system because Twitch hasn't really had any kind of innovation since 2018, maybe 2019. Well, there's a sitting down, not doing much because they feel, and this is my opinion, just coming out is that Twitch feels that why should they work harder because they don't have any competition really, really all they have competition, especially after mixer was nuked. Uh, Facebook gaming is something that, well, it's Facebook and a lot of people have their preconce uh, preconceived notions on Facebook and Facebook streaming. Uh, YouTube is still trying to get their live streaming systems worked out and pushed through better. But you know, that's still, <clears throat> that's still something that's going to be coming down the pipeline until YouTube figures out how things work with the live streaming space. And when they do, Twitch is really in trouble because not only will you have your video on demand, your short form videos, especially with shorts that they can take care of the TikTok uh, crowd and also live streaming and community building systems all under one roof. What does Twitch have? Twitch is really, uh, really good with live streaming. That's it. As a social media platform, Twitch is terrible. As a video on demand platform, Twitch is horrible. So this is, these are just my opinions and you can take them as fact or, or not, but it's something that we should definitely look into as people are starting to look at alternative places to stream or to put their live streaming because a lot of people are getting tired of how Twitch is treating content creators as a whole by a lot of things we I talked about tonight that they are looking for other places to, to look for, to go to. And we've already seen it where Twitch, like with, uh, with Harris Heller, they did not want to, or they didn't tell him that his, uh, partner agreement when it was expiring. And this is a multi-billion dollar company, seriously, that they don't have the capability to look at a, a file within their systems and say, oh yes, your partner agreement is expiring on this particular date. Do you want to renew? No, they, what, how he explained it was very disingenuous to how it's part, um, sorry, Twitch is very disingenuous to partners. If you're not in the top echelon, the 0.001% of the, the creators on their platform, they, like I said, like I keep saying this, Twitch doesn't care about you. They really don't even though you are like maybe a big time affiliate, just about ready to 
you hop over to the partner uh, side of things, even then they can care less. There is what, 400 or so thousand affiliates out there on Twitch. And maybe there's only in the tens of thousands, if maybe 20 or 30,000 partners. So Twitch really doesn't care if, if you're on the platform or not. They, they don't. As long as viewers are there viewing ads and watching ads and watching more ads, that's all they care about. I mean, that's what you have to, to realize as a content creator is that the any any thing of that is any platform they really don't care about you but certain platforms probably have a different levels of caring i'll put that as for uh keeping it simple of caring for a content creator twitch is like on the bottom of the list youtube is trying to because there are so many people out there that have a youtube account and they can reach billions of eyeballs within uh, within the world so twitch is very tiny compared to uh, the likes of youtube or the likes of facebook so it's kind of like apples and oranges pretty much but wrapping things up here this is i'm testing seeing how different length or lengths of episodes which one would be better uh 30 minutes an hour uh, is something that I would definitely love to hear in the comments down below, or if you go ahead and to our Gilded server or our website, it's at thecollective.network. There is a place there for these particular podcast episodes. Again, this is just a beta episode, testing things out, seeing how things go and seeing how things work. Um, yeah. So let me know what you think and uh, in the comments below check out the links in the description as well and don't forget to hit that like subscribe and that bell and you know what to do but until next time i want to say thank you and uh have a good night everybody